The urban heat island effect causes the city of Cincinnati to be warmer than surrounding suburban or rural areas, but some neighborhoods are significantly warmer than others. Chief Meteorologist John Gum looks at how policies of the past, including redlining, continue to impact the people who live there today. In our investigation into childhood poverty, a Cincinnati crisis. For the first time ever, we have measurements, over 80,000 of them to be exact, detailing where the warmest neighborhoods are within Cincinnati. So this was a really great example of citizen science. You know, we had 17 volunteers driving 11 different routes throughout the city, uh, both in the morning, the midday, and in evening, taking real data. Climate is a large part of Michael Forrester's focus as the director of the Office of Environment and Sustainability for the city of Cincinnati. He says the data collected was eye-opening, particularly for all those neighborhoods along Interstate 75 north of downtown. We knew that, you know, the industrialized corridor along the Mill Creek, you know, it has more pavement, it has those large warehouse buildings, we knew that. But we, we hadn't seen it. We hadn't seen how those choices that the city has made over uh, a long period of time, um, how that modifies the environment that people live in. Then there's how large the actual difference in temperature is between the city's hottest and coolest neighborhoods. You know, we did record a 12 degree difference. And that's staggering. That's a huge amount. Yeah, that's is. a huge amount. 12 degrees. That's the difference in temperature across Cincinnati's hottest and coolest neighborhoods. And this is the map which details the data of that 12 degree difference. Now the red and orange colors, of course, are the hotter areas. The yellow, white, and blue shows the cooler communities. Among Cincinnati's cooler neighborhoods, Columbia Tusculum, Kennedy Heights, Linwood, Mount Airy, and Mount Lookout. These cooler temperatures are the result of the abundance of trees and other green space. The hotter neighborhoods, on the other hand, include Carthage, Lower Price Hill, Millvale, OTR and Pendleton, Paddock Hills, and Walnut Hills. While some of these communities are adjacent to large industrial and commercial complexes making them hotter, at least 10 of Cincinnati's warmest neighborhoods were also historically redlined. And that's no coincidence to Sophie Rivas, the Climate and Resiliency Director for Groundwork Ohio River Valley. When a community is redlined, it means that the government has selected them as not being worth investment. Banks took that, that program and they chose to invest in the white communities that were deemed investable and not invest in the black communities that were not deemed investable. And so as a result, you had a vast disparity in the way the two environments were built. That disparity resulted in those neighborhoods usually ending up with less green space in parks, meaning a lower tree canopy to provide shade on hot summer days. They were also usually built with more pavement and other impervious surfaces to soak up the heat. Across 108 U.S. urban areas studying in a 2020 paper in the journal Climate, historically redlined areas were nearly three degrees warmer on average than non-redlined areas. We do see Hyde Park, we do see Oakley, but down this 75 corridor, uh, there's absolutely an equity impact where, you know, our neighborhoods of either low income or our communities of color are just hotter. And that heat can be a huge problem. Historically, heat is the leading weather-related killer in the U.S., with more than 700 people dying of heat-related illnesses each year. That's more than flooding, tornadoes, even hurricanes. And this is especially true in urban areas, where according to the CDC, over 80% of those heat-related deaths occur. It's significantly hotter at night. It doesn't cool down. And our bodies need that. Our bodies need that cool down period because if you're exposed to that prolonged heat, that's when you start to have those health issues. And we've got that data up on local12.com. You can look at the maps of the neighborhoods, review that data and that complete report. And it's also at cincinnatipoverty.com. We've got a separate web address for that. But it's fascinating when you look at this information because mm -hmm. we know 
intuitively that the city is going to be hotter than outlying areas where right. we don't realize there are sections of the city that are significantly cooler. Mount Airy Forest, obviously, the yeah. reason why Mount Airy is one of the cooler areas. We found that Westwood, which was a redlined area historically, is actually a cooler neighborhood as well because of the environment out there and all the trees and green space that surrounds it. So there are different variables here that go into it. Hyde Park, parts of Hyde Park, one of the coolest areas in Cincinnati, but you go to the northern side of Hyde Park between uh, Oak Oakley and Hyde yeah. Park, that is extremely hot. There are pockets of heat in Oakley and Hyde Park as well. So this is fascinating stuff. I invite you to go online and check that's out the latest. It's not just that. one or two degrees. You said 12 degrees. That's the part yeah, that's between shocking. the hottest and coolest areas. And again, that's average from morning through the afternoon and evening across three different time periods. Right. It is cool well, good stuff. Good job. You did. I mean, those graphics and everything. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank yeah. you.